Good morning. Giving honor to God, the one true God, the Father of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Reverend Kevin Franklin, West Mahoa Missionary Baptist Church in West Dallas, Texas, where my senior pastor is Billy F. Matthew Sr. This morning, we're bringing the word of God and we're going to do this thing a little bit differently because we are in the pandemic, November 22nd, 2020. And this pandemic doesn't allow us to fellowship inside of the church buildings the way we normally would, but the word of God still has to go forward and we're doing it this way. We Zoom. We Zoom. In. Yeah, this is a recording that's actually done from Zoom. But we're going to teach this thing, we're going to preach this thing as if we're in a building filled to capacity. Dear God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for everything that you are, everything that you've been, for your loving kindness, your mercy, your boldness, the courage that you allow us to use for this very day, God, we thank you for this word, we appreciate it. For the individuals that have taught before me and we will teach after you, we thank you, God. And God, allow this word to go forward and find further ground. Allow it to grow me as I give it. These are the blessings we have to me, darling, to understand. Amen. And y'all, y'all know it's difficult to close your eyes when you actually know you're being recorded. But I wanted to start this thing off with the gospel. Uh, you know the gospel is it recorded in the New Testament, the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the gospel is the good news, the good news that Jesus Christ gave his life for all the world, that whosoever believed in, in, in him, you know, God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that actually happened from the finished work on the cross. And Jesus Christ gave his life for us. He was crucified. He was nailed to a cross. And he died for our sins. And he was placed in the borrowed tomb. He laid in that borrowed tomb all Friday night, all Saturday morning and Saturday night. But it was recorded that that Sunday morning early, um, Jesus Christ, he got out of that borrowed tomb with all power in his hands. And he actually walked the earth for a little while so that his disciples could see him. But he didn't stay here. The reason why he didn't stay here because uh, the Holy Spirit had work to do. So Jesus Christ returned to heaven to sit on the right hand side of our Father God in heaven, making petitions for you and I as we continue to go out this live this world of sin. He petitions God for us, for God's continued grace. And Jesus Christ gave us that opportunity to have grace. And when Jesus Christ left, he sent us back a company. That comforter that he sent us is the Holy Spirit. And this is what I'm actually talking about inside of uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ. We all that believe in that finished work have now received that Holy Spirit and are saved, reconciled back to God, listed now as saints that actually have seen, but we do not have to see anymore. And today we were actually talking about uh, Instead of me breaking it down and giving you the topic like that, let's go ahead and get into the word. Second Samuel 12 and 1 says, And the Lord said unto Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little elam, elam, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamp and dressed it for the man that was to come, that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. So Nathan breaks the story down, y'all. He actually begins to tell David about this lamb who this the poor man loved. And he had very little, but he loved this lamb. 
He talks about the rich man. The rich man is actually having a guest of his own. This guest is actually traveling not to see the poor man, but the, the, the guest is actually traveling to see the rich man. And the rich man has many flocks. He got lamb on top of lamb on top of lamb. But he decided that he didn't actually want to take up his, any of his flock to actually give to his guests. So he actually took from the poor man. And when he actually took it from the poor man, the poor man who loved the lamb, he wasn't even planning on eating the lamb, but the rich man took that lamb, dressed it for his guest. And that's what he was actually serving his guest. And when David actually heard this story from Nathan, David was big man. He wasn't regular man, he was big man. And inside of that situation, what he actually said was this individual, not only would he pay this man back for the lambs that he took, he ain't gonna give him lamb for lamb. He said fourfold. He said he's gonna do that. He's gonna give it fourfold. In addition to that, this man is gonna lose his life. The ironic part about all of it is when Nathan was finished, he was actually gonna point the man out. He was gonna show him where the man was. He, they didn't actually have to go for it. Nathan told David, the man is you. That man is you. See, David was actually, David had actually taken from one of his soldiers. We're not gonna get all the way into this story, but I, you probably heard the story of Bathsheba, Uriah, and how David, who was actually the king, who actually had been delivered from Saul's hand, who actually had defeated Goliath, who actually had beaten lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, I added a little bit of that stuff, but he had, he had fought uh, bears in his time as a shepherd, and God had delivered David from all of these things. And even though God had done all of these things for David, David actually saw this woman on the rooftop at one time. Her name was Bathsheba, and she was there bathing. And David saw this woman, and he just had to have her. Even though David was the king, and he actually already had many women in his kingdom, in his palace, he already had it. But this woman, Bathsheba, was married to one of David's most faithful soldiers. His name was Uriah. And Uriah was actually on the battlefield, which David should have been at the given time. He should have been on the battlefield with his men, but he wasn't at that time. He saw Bathsheba outside bathing on the top. And when he actually saw her outside on the rooftop bathing, he said, bring that woman to me. And when that woman came to, Bath to David, David ended up getting Bathsheba pregnant. When she actually got pregnant, she, he had to actually do some things. So he brought Uriah off, off the battlefield to actually uh, lay with his wife so he could actually trick Uriah to believe that the baby was actually his. Uriah was another soldier, so Uriah didn't leave, lay with his wife. He actually didn't touch her because he knew he should be on the battlefield. David didn't actually know what to do because Uriah wouldn't touch his wife. So what David said is when Uriah gets back on the battlefield, put him at the front. Put him at the front of the fight. Put him at the front of the battle. And you guessed it. That's right. What actually happened to Uriah is he was killed. Uriah was killed. And David took Uriah's wife and the child that they were actually going to have ended up dying. But these were the actions of King David. And David didn't realize when Nathan was talking that the individual that he was actually talking about was him. And David actually saw from the outside looking in how he would actually be upset with himself. How the actions, his own actions, would make him put his own self to death. And I'm actually talking about this action that this, this individual had with that David actually had when he took Bathsheba, when David actually had, when Nathan was actually telling him the story of the man that was taking the lamb, inside of each one of those situations, the, the, the thing that actually is coming is theft. I'm not talking about Bathsheba being ownership. I'm talking about Bathsheba already belonging to someone. And that's when he was actually showing him the story of the lamb. He was telling King David that you have everything. And even though this individual didn't have as much as you have, he loved that which he did have. And you took even that. And so when we're looking at this situation, I'm looking at the theft. I'm looking at the theft, the act of stealing, uh, the felonious taking or removing of personal property with intent to deprive the rightful owner of it, the unlawful taking of property. I'm not talking about that sheep of being property. Let's get that straight. I don't want anybody upset and thinking that I'm actually saying the one was property, but I'm actually saying the definition talks about property, but what we're actually focusing on is the theft of it, the taking of something that is actually connected to another individual and not yourself. The theft of it, the unlawful taking of something that does not, does not belong to you. 
whether it be belonging to you by the changing of a last name or, or a lamb itself that you actually cherished and love. The story is actually saying that there was something that was taken that did not belong to David. And David was upset about the, the individual that was willing to steal. And when we actually take a look at it, we have said that this individual was willing to steal for his own purposes because that guest wasn't traveling to the poor man's house. That guest was traveling to the rich man's house. So the rich man was willing to steal for absolutely no reason at all. No justification for his theft. He had everything and he had no justification for his theft, but he took anyway. He took anyway. I love the definition when the definition breaks it down. And he says, with the intent to deprive the rightful owner of it. The intent to deprive the rightful owner of it. We're talking about theft. An unlawful taking of something. We're talking about theft. And so when we actually look at the word, the, the Bible, and we go to, to Matthew 6 and 25, and we look at 6 and 25, and 6 and 25 says, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Are we considering that theft? When Jesus Christ is breaking things down and he's talking to his disciples, he's telling his disciples that there is absolutely nothing that they should actually worry about. They should actually go through this life not thinking about something that they will eat, not thinking about how they will be clothed, not thinking about how they will be dressed. He's saying you shouldn't actually worry about absolutely nothing, but even anytime an individual picks up a worry, is that not a theft? So when we actually thinking about this thing, it's almost as if Nathan is talking directly to us, as if Nathan is talking to those individuals that are following Christ, they consider themselves Christians, and he's actually telling him, that man is you. He's actually telling that individual that if you picked up worry at any given time, and you've actually decided to carry that, that's not something that God gave you, and if God didn't give it to you, it does not belong to you, and if it does not belong to you, it's felt. That is in itself the intent to deprive the rightful owner of it for no reason at all. Just like David, we actually have everything, but we've decided to pick up some things that just don't belong to us inside of this pandemic. We're worrying about one thing or the other. Inside of this, this United States of America, as we see racism showing its ugly head, it ain't a brand new situation. It's just a Polaroid, polarized situation. And as we're looking at that thing actually happening, are we actually worrying about that? And if we are worrying about that, we're picking up something that does not belong to us, and, we're, and it is called theft. When we were actually coming up, when we were actually hit the stores, the first thing my mom would say when we actually hit a store is don't touch nothing. But if we find ourselves touching something, the next thing that she would actually say is put that back. That doesn't belong to you. Put that back. That doesn't belong to you. So I'm actually looking at here today to tell the Christians, if you've actually picked up worry, you should put that back because that doesn't belong to you. God says be anxious for absolutely nothing. So if you find yourself with sleepless nights, you've actually picked up something for absolutely no reason because that does not belong to you. And you need to put that back. That's them. That's them. How many Christians actually think about this situation and think that they, they will actually call themselves thieves? But if you're picking up worry, if you're picking up worry and God says, that's not what you're supposed to do, that's not yours. Can we go a little bit deeper? Second Timothy 1 through 7 says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear. And if God has not given us the spirit of fear, and if we've actually afraid of anything, if we're afraid of anything except the healthy fear of God himself, we find ourselves stealing because God never gave us the spirit of fear. God never gave us the spirit of worry. And if those things that, things that we're picking up inside of this time of the pandemic, November 22nd, 2020, if you find yourself with sleepless nights, if you find yourself with concerns that are outside of your concern for seeking God himself, you find yourself as a thief. You picked up something that doesn't belong to you for absolutely no reason at all. Second Timothy, this Paul is actually talking to, to Timothy and he says, he's writing a letter to Timothy. He's telling Timothy, go ahead and go show out. Go out there and tell everybody about who God actually is. Spread the word and be worried about absolutely. 
absolutely nothing. Be fearful about absolutely nothing. But he's telling Timothy to be fearful about absolutely nothing where people are killing people for believing in Jesus Christ. He's telling him to take your steps, move forward and speak and teach boldly and proudly and do it so without fear because you, Timothy, cannot be a thief. And since God didn't actually give us the spirit of fear, you need to walk boldly and teach and preach the message of God. Sorry. I mean, even in my house, I get inside of my preacher voice. I don't know what preachers actually get that voice. But we have to have to take a look at it. And we must begin to dissect the lives that we actually live and the things that we're actually doing and the reasons why we're doing certain things. Why would a Christian's life be shortened because of, because of a stress-related situation? Because it's not yours. The concerns... You are, we are part of this world. We're in this world. But all the concerns that we actually have, we can give them to God. And if we give all of our concerns to God, there's absolutely no worry for us. Why won't we actually pick it up? Why won't we live that life? Why have we chosen to go into a situation that we can actually just be happy, have joy inside of all things that are actually happening, why do we continue to pick up and steal the things that don't belong to us? These things didn't belong to a child of God because God said he has everything for us. He said he has the, the plans that he has for us are for good. And the reason why, the reason why we continue to pick up things, the reason why we still continue to pick up things that just do not belong to us is because of sin itself. And that's the very thing that we actually have to begin to war against every single part of our day because it has confused us to make us believe that the things of this world that are holding us down, that are making us move backwards are ours because it's in an unnatural state is man because sin was never something that was supposed to belong to us. When God created us, he created us in his own image. And when God created us in his own image, he created us without sin. And when we picked up sin, the very thing that didn't belong to us, we were already stealing. And who thought that stealing sin was a theft? But inside of that, the question is why? Why are we stealing? Why are we stealing death? Because you do understand, once you steal sin, for the wages of sin is death, the question will be, why? We're looking at the rich man who had many flocks that he actually had, and he could have killed for the, 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 his visitor himself, but instead of taking of his own flock, he went to the lamb that actually belonged to the poor man, and he wanted to take that and dress that up and give it to his own visitor. But why? Why? We have forgotten. We haven't forgotten. We have decided that living a life of sin is easier than living a life Your Bible says, that which, I will, that which I would do, I do not do. The flesh is actually driving us. We have to get into our minds and understanding that. Ours should be a spirit for your life. That our spirit should actually guide us first. That inside of every single situation, what we must do is we must not take. We can't take the world, these world's things because the world things, it make us sick because they do not belong to us. And because we're taking world things that do not belong to us, we have taken on the wages of what we're actually taking. Just like David said when he was actually talking about that rich man, he was actually saying, this person should die. This person should die. We should not have any worries. We should not have any fear. Because those things don't belong to us. God got us covered. So put that back. It simply doesn't belong to you. It simply doesn't belong to you.